you know, what stood out to me was the F-16 landing gear checklist. I had to go back and look at it, but I remember these from like the EP sims. Like this is a gnarly checklist. It is a long checklist and it is a complicated checklist. You throw it at night, you throw it after uh, the tanking incident. And then one thing is measures no, no, knows he's bent metal. So that's got to be a, a, just a huge amplifying factor as far as like what's going to happen now uh things like so he's got a lot of weight on his shoulders as everyone's trying to troubleshoot this yeah i think yeah i think you made a great point especially you know just even in the traffic pattern stuff like you're saying that i mean it, every pilot knows probably every air force pilot because you kind of taught it in uh pilot training but in the fighter world for sure you know we talk about snowballing mistakes and errors and stuff and so we don't even know where the I mean, it could go back to his ground ops. It could go back to the taxi out, the takeoffs on that could happen on takeoff. I mean, there's a lot of little things that could have bothered him and put him off his mental game, you know, just a little bit stuff that won't come out in the AIB, you know, so as he's getting to the tanker and he's flying information waiting for his turn to tank, like all these things are kind of compounding with this like difficult situation. And so there's a lot more than just the tanking that's probably weighing on, on him. I mean, it could go back to conversations like he feels a lot of pressure, like you were saying, like they're on a tight timeline to try to get out the door and deploy. He wants to be one of the guys who's going to go in just a couple short months. So he knows that this ride has to get done in order for him to be MQT complete and like mission qualified to go. I mean, so there's just that context of all that pressure that's on him uh, leads to very easily snowballing uh, your thought processes. Right. So like you're saying, like on that approach, you know, he's stable. It talks about the AIB. He's stable on the ILS. Everything's looking really good. He break, he's out of the weather. He can see the runway environment just fine. And so, you know, flying the ILS in the weather is a little bit taxing. So maybe, you know, in my experience, at least like when things are clearly, you know, a little bit difficult, it's, it's a little bit easier to focus. Like I really need to nail this ILS. As soon as he breaks out of the weather and again, just, just going back to me, like I can, I can see, like, I wouldn't take that like nice XL, like, okay, see the my environment. So maybe I have time now to think about like the things that I've done wrong, you know, now to think about like, oh, this sucks that I screwed up. Like right. the tanking couldn't do it. Anyway, so he starts to get down, you know, other uh, trains of thought or whatever, but obviously that's not the time to do it, but that's also, you know, the time that that happens a lot for a lot of us. And so it can very quickly, like you said, like turn into maybe, you know, we catch it or we've caught it in our past experiences, but this particular time he didn't catch, you know, that his uh, flight path marker was, you know, too low. And, he, and he can't see the details, obviously it's night. So he just sees lights, not the height of the lights or anything like that. So I think the snowball effect is definitely something that's going on for him. And then to hit, I mean, I don't know if even taxiing the F-16 at like 20 knots and you hit a funny bump or you even go over like the cable you know, like I don't, every time it like puts a little like, you know, it's a little jolting or whatever. Anything that's not smooth and yeah. what you're expecting in a fighter airplane is scary. And so I can't even imagine what it felt like to hit something, you know, foreign with your landing gear that you're not expecting. And it's night like that is terrifying. So the next, you know, getting off the ground, like, thank goodness they were able to get off the ground, get start working the checklist and stuff. But I, you know, having the mental discipline then to, to like calm your thoughts down and to settle down and then to get into this, like you said, this checklist that is a monster. I mean, throughout my entire F-16 flying and F-35 flying, honestly, like the big fear was at the end of the mission, I would have a certain amount of, you know, like not that much gas left and I'd throw down the landing gear and it would show something that I was not expecting. <laughs> right. That checklist is not something that you can just like run simply. Uh, <laughs> it's not always very clear and and, and, odd, and I know even from my experience at the Viper that there are lots of landing configurations and stuff that I didn't have an answer for yet. Like it was going to take a lot of like digging through it and trying to figure it out. So, I mean, I can't imagine again, like going back to the context of like what's going on in this cockpit. It's, it's not, you know, it's, it's not simple. It's not as easy as just like, Oh, read this checklist. Like, Oh, now I should, you know, not to like minimize what the AIB's findings are and stuff, but it's not a simple, a thing that's going on between those two cockpits like to talk about the coordination between his element lead and him and the soft like those are all really challenging things to be able to communicate effectively together uh 
and to talk about things that are not super clear, uh, even as you're reading them out of, out of checklist. And he's trying to do this and it's dark in his cockpit and he's close to the ground because he's in the landing pattern. He's trying to follow his element lead around. So he still has some sort of, you know, the deconfliction is probably pretty well set, but he doesn't get a throw on the kind of autopilot that you and I are used to in like the airline world, right? So he's still flying, hand flying at night with this, you know, pretty big deal uh, damage to his aircraft. And, and at the same time, he's got this dark cockpit with this checklist that doesn't stay open to the page that you want to stay open to. You got to look down and like with your flashlight and read one line at a time, try to follow with your fingers. Like, so this is the kind of environment that is, that even the most experienced and confident fighter pilots, we don't want this kind of, we don't want to be here for sure. Uh, I don't want to ever be there, obviously. So I can, again, like the context of it is, is pretty rich, you know, it's, it's a difficult place to be. Yeah, I think, so to circle back, cause you, you hit a several really, I think salient point here. 